Hey everybody, since winter's here, it's time for me to turn my attention to projects that I've had on the back burner for a while. One of those projects is this Kohler K321 14 horsepower engine that I removed from a John Deere tractor that I had last year. This engine ran okay, but it smoked a lot at idle and under load. Um, I had another engine at the time that I just swapped out for that tractor, so I decided to do that and I set this engine aside with plans to possibly rebuild it as a spare for my 214. There's a few things that could cause excessive smoking like that. Um, I suspect that the rings are probably bad in this engine. So my first uh, instinct was to go ahead and do a compression test. The problem with doing a compression test on one of these cooler K-series engines is they have what's called an automatic compression release or ACR. And what that does, is it lowers the compression ratio during low RPMs during starting that makes starting easier for the engine. The problem with that is that it doesn't give you accurate compression test readings when you try to do a compression test in a normal way you would do it. So a lot of people recommend you do a leak down test. Another thing you can do instead of a leak down test is you can actually do a compression test by spinning the engine in reverse. That eliminates the automatic compression release. The problem with that is kind of difficult to do. You can't you know, easily make your starter spin the other direction without damaging maybe something else in the electrical system of the tractor. In my case, I don't have it in the tractor. I have no wiring attached. I, in fact, I don't even have a starter on it right now, so that's a whole other issue for me. So myself, I'll probably opt to do the leak down test on this, but what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you the difference between spinning the engine in its normal direction, show you that the uh, compression is very low or non-existent on the compression gauge, and I'm going to spin it the other way to show you that it will actually get compression that way. I don't recommend you do this the way I'm going to do this in this video. Um, I'm going to use a cordless drill to spin the engine on the crankshaft nut and the reason I'm not going to recommend you do that is because when you finally do hit compression, either if you're spinning in reverse or you would go fast enough to override the release, um, it's, the engine is going to want to jerk that drill right out of your hand. The other issue with doing it with the drill is that if you suddenly let off of the drill, the momentum of the flywheel is also going to want to rip that drill right out of your hand. Either way, you could end up injuring your hand, so I don't recommend doing it this way. So again, the only reason I'm doing it right now is just to illustrate the difference between spinning the engine in either direction to show that the compression release works in one direction and not the other. Okay, so if we're looking at the engine from this side, the engine actually spins clockwise. So that's why we're gonna do this right now. And what we should see is either very low or no compression on the compression gauge. Okay, so we had no compression. Now I'm going to spin the engine backwards and that should override the automatic compression release. Like I said before, this isn't very safe to do, so I don't recommend doing it. Um, I'm not going to go very fast because I don't want to have this drill get jerked out of my hand or hurt my wrist. All right, you can see we did get some compression, but I was going pretty slow. Um, we also actually broke the nut loose on the flywheel, which I was kind of afraid that was gonna happen also. It's another reason you really can't do it this way. I think the John Deere manual actually recommends that you um, wrap a rope around the PTO clutch to spin the engine backwards and do it and pull the rope. Um, I have my doubts on whether or not you'd be able to get consistent readings doing that, but if you can, if anybody has tried it, you know, leave a message in the comments. Let me know how that worked for you. Maybe I can try that one on this one later. So like I said before, I'll probably just go ahead and do the leak down test as recommended. Um, probably see that coming up in one of my other videos. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.